Hi, Jason Fladlin here, and if you're looking to expand your business while cutting down on your personal involvement in your business, then you're going to love this video. When it comes to outsourcing correctly, there are three primary things you must focus on. First, where to go to hire your outsource workers. Second, determining who to hire. And third, managing who you hire properly. Let's go through each point. First, where to go to hire your outsource worker. Our top choice is a site called Odesk. In fact, we're in the top 1% of businesses who have spent money with Odesk, so that gives you an indicator of how much we use them. Odesk is going to be a bit more expensive up front usually, but it's mostly worth it. If you're cost conscious, you might consider going to a place called onlinejobs.ph or even posting on Craigslist in smaller countries with a lower cost of living. Ideally, over time, you'll start to find some really good outsourcers, and then you can utilize the best place to get outsourcers through word of mouth. We've built up quite a team throughout the years just by taking our top talent and asking if they know anyone else like them who would like to do the things that they do. It really helps build a culture for your business this way too. Second, whom do you hire exactly? Let's say you started combing through one of those places that I recommended and you see some different talent that you think looks promising. Well, how do you choose this person for the job over another person? Often, you don't. We usually hire three people to perform the same task initially. Now, it might seem wasteful, but experience proves otherwise. If you outsource linearly, meaning you delegate one task and wait for its completion before moving on to the next task, you're going to have a bad time. Here's the real scoop. No matter how much vetting you do, no matter how promising the resume looks, no matter how many five-star ratings or good feedback the person has, you just don't know. You don't know how good they'll perform at the job you want to give them. So don't give them the full job at first. Just give them a small piece. And give the same piece to the best three people you find. I like to spread the cost, too. I try to find a real cheap provider, a middle-of-the-road provider, and one on the high end. You'll discover what you pay and the quality you get are often two different things. It's very possible with this strategy to find unbelievably talented people who work at competitive wages. Finally, how are you going to manage your outsourcers? There are two considerations here, the tools you use and your process. The paradox of outsourcing is the first time you do it, it will usually take you longer to outsource a task than if you did it yourself. This is why people go too long without outsourcing. You just have to suck it up and realize up front that, yeah, initially, outsourcing is going to slow things down. That's because you need to be extremely specific with what you want and how you want it delivered. Then you need to set milestones and checkpoints, as well as getting status updates from them at least once a day, ideally twice a day if you can swing it. You should also prepare to communicate to them with redundancy in place. For example, make them send you both a Skype message and an email when they complete a task. This way, nothing gets lost. Consider using something like Dropbox or Google Drive to check things in and figure out how you're going to handle updates and version control as well. Ideally, this should be thought out in advance of hiring the outsourcer. So there you have it. If you're dealing with the prospect of outsourcing and it's sort of freaking you out, no sweat. Just focus on using the places we recommend to hire talent and go through the process of hiring the talent and communicating with them how I described in this video. If you want to know more about the outsourcing process, then check out the description below this video.